cast composed almost entirely of women, was this really going to be another ridiculous, race-swapped, intersectional feminist disaster drenched in heavy doses of THE MESSAGE? Resident Evil was once a great gaming franchise that was a license to print money back in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Now it has become a hollow husk of its former glory. Get it? Gory? Glory? Yeah, forget it. I remember when Resident Evil Director's Cut dropped. I went to a friend's house and all the guys, we got together and we went to his place to play it, right? This game was so scary. We were spooked walking around the hood more so than usual. Before that harmless hobo that begged for money and tried to piss on you. Now he could have been a zombie that tried to piss on you. I'll get you, bitch. It was like a whole new world of gaming was opened up to us. It was truly a golden age. Then Resident Evil 2 dropped. And at the time, it was the best selling horror game in gaming history. And to this day, it's in the top 10 of the best selling horror games of all time. In fact, it's number four, and this list is dominated by, you guessed it, Resident Evil games. Resident Evil was such a powerhouse back in the day that basically other gaming companies just started to copy their formula. Hell, it was so successful, Capcom themselves pretty much used the Resident Evil engine to make other stuff like Dino Crisis. I think Square Enix came up with Parasite Eve, which is basically kind of like Resident Evil. Last I remember. Crazy. In 2002, Resident Evil the movie was launched, starring Mila Jovovich, whose husband is Paul W.S. Anderson. And these two have subjected us to years of trash films starring his goddamn wife. The last piece of cinema trash to fly out of his ass was Monster Hunters in 2020. Starring you know who. And it has all to do with the original game and its plot. How he and his wife have not been arrested for crimes against humanity baffles me. But as bad as these films were, Netflix Resident Evil makes the Mila Jovovich Resident Evil films look like Citizen Kane. She's good, huh? Yeah, this thing controls the electrodes in her brain and pumps her full of 87 different drugs. Want to see her do a backflip? Blame to <laughs> Netflix's Resident Evil is an attack on the senses. If you know anything about Resident Evil, if you've played Resident Evil at all, if you've played all the Resident Evil games, if you even have a passing interest in Resident Evil, this show will bash you in the head with a shovel called diversity. The world is burning. Albert Wesker, the well-known psychopath and possible white supremacist, has been made into a black man. How the writers could pass up in this day and age Literally finally getting the green light to write a white man as the ultimate supervillain baffles me. That's the equivalent of a progressive Twitter user passing up the chance to blame Donald Trump for current issues in our country. Uh, uh, uh. Wesker is now the doting father figure. How much does she hate me? No one hates you, Dad. Who needs his kid's blood to survive because he's a clone. There's three of them. This series makes less sense than Dark Side Phil's business model for success. Thank you, Jake. How about that? But I can guarantee you, Dark Side Phil would have enough brains not to greenlight this television show. And that's saying something. I bet you if you gave DSP a dollar and wrote him a message saying, 
think this would be a good idea for a Resident Evil movie because Phil won't see it. DSP's too busy playing WWE Champion. He would sit there, snort wildly, and tell you no. No, wait, no. New DSP is, like, hyper-progressive. He's scared of being canceled, so he'd probably be like, it sounds like a good idea, snort. Evelyn Marcus is now the head of the once faceless Umbrella Corporation. She swings between femme fatale. You're a genius. Think of all the people you could help. Huh? Cutters, the spastics. Hey, the chronic masturbators? What about us? Oh, sounds like things are better at home. I'm a great lady. And hyper masculine businesswoman. So I think it's time for a thank you. A little f <laughs> respect! Damn, this bitch gone crazy. It's 2022. Toxic masculinity is only bad when men do it, just like sexual exploitation. What about exploiting women? Well, you know, when a man does it, it's exploitation. When a woman does it, it's good business. She's also a hardcore lesbian. Meow. I bet they use that goat during bedroom play. What's her OnlyFans account? I'm asking for Billy. You are a naughty little girl. If I was your father, I would rip off that black thong underwear of yours. I would take my hand and I would spank your smooth bottom until I... Ah! 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 Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Raycon is in your face with ear delicious sounds and style, sleek and fashionable. Did I mention it comes in five different colors? Make them match your shoes, baby. Get the stomping in your Air Force Ones. With an eight hour playtime and a 32 hour battery life with the charger case, they look, feel and sound better than ever with optimized gel tabs, the perfect inner ear fit, far more comfortable than other brands I've owned and at half the cost. The everyday earbud has over 50,000 five star reviews. Don't forget noise isolation mode. And when you want to immerse yourself in an audiobook. And there's also awareness mode. When you have to run errands and sometimes you need to hear the bank teller, but your motorcycle helmet's on. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash it's a Gundam to get 15% off your Raycons today. Anyway, she's hell bent on getting out Umbrella's new drug, Joy, out to the masses. Tell me about Joy. They say you can't put a price on happiness, but sure you can, if you bottle it. <laughs> I was lethargic, unhappy, and unmotivated. You need more coke. And then I found joy. But joy still represents the future of this company. The writers got this plot idea from Kids in the Hall because it's an antidepressant that makes you happy. Well, as you know, I am working on a drug that will cure depression. Go on. And they also stole the pill idea from We Happy Few. The only thing they changed was the design of the pill. Have you forgotten your joy? <laughs> of course not. Snug as a bug on a drug. Well, come on then, finish up. Uh, Hell, put Paola in the white face paint from We Happy Few, and she'll look just like the character that offers you joy at the beginning of the game. Well, anyway. For some reason, this drug has a T-virus in it. Why? Because Netflix adaptation. Whenever you find a stupid plot point, remember, it's a Netflix show. They have a flawless track record of producing live action cancer. But Daddy Wesker is trying to delay the drug so they can do more testing and make sure it's fixed and safe for the people because he's heroic throughout the show. What happened in Raccoon City, we'll take precautions. The only precaution is a cure. We don't have one of those. So let me find one. Look, get me a team. I need you focused. I can do both. Which makes no sense. He's a clone of Wesker. Why not make him a whole new character? Then this movie would have made way more sense. But no. We can't do that. It's almost as if Netflix adaptations are married to bad ideas. Also, whenever someone brings up the T-Virus as a subject, somebody else will pop up and go, Is it like COVID? No, you were sick. Am I gonna get sick? I don't think so. You don't think so? Will I have to quarantine? No, it's not like COVID. Nobody can fathom the idea of a wild pandemic outside of what recently happened. 
it's not like the video game was based on that for, I don't know, like a decade or two. <sighs> Frankly, the idea of knowing a drug could turn people into zombies, but putting it out anyway is just too dumb. A dead world is not good for business. With as much as this show references COVID, you'd think they would stay away from any outcome as a major corporation that would make them less money. And there's no way to make money off a miracle drug if the whole planet goes to Quack. Modern adaptation, modern writers, corporations, incredibly evil, horribly evil. They only want to do the most evil thing possible. Even if it means making money for a short period of time but launching us into a zombie apocalypse. That's the theme here. The events happen after Resident Evil 5, but they have their own tyrant, which was based on the Resident Evil 1 tyrant because Netflix adaptation. Like seriously, by the time Resident Evil 3 happened, Tyrant slash Nemesis was damn near perfected. They also had the eyeball in the back scene Tyrant, which was a nod from Resident Evil 2, where the doctor came up with the G-Virus and infected himself because Umbrella came in there and shot him up for some reason. You know the score if you've played it. And the scene only lasted one minute. It's a throwaway scene of no value other than to establish that the original Wesker exists and he's a bad guy. Wesker looks like Wesley Snipes from Blade. It, I don't even know how they didn't draw the parallels. They really didn't too. He even has a Blade haircut. Like, what? Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up hill. Our female protagonist is Jade, and she's about as interesting as reading my sister's Amazon wish list. Jade goes from being super strong, super badass, and super intelligent, genetically altered superwoman, basically. They got the idea from Resident Evil movies. Now she goes from being super fantastic to being actually stupid. So basically to drive the story forward, all female characters that are amazing, strong, and independent, to protect me, I was kept in the dark about things. Things he thought I couldn't handle. But us girls, we're tougher and smarter than people give us credit for. Aren't we? Hmm? Hmm? They're fierce. They become plot device stupid whenever the case is needed. The fact that most situations in this show are started by plot device stupidity becomes glaringly obvious. You sit there, you see these characters and how they operate, and then all of a sudden they like get Down Syndrome for five whole minutes. Like, here's some occasions. I'm going to open this box that obviously has a dangerous thing inside of it. Oh no, it's a dangerous thing. Oh, it's dad's secret lab. He has a bunch of fail safes to make sure no one gets any information. And he's gone to great lengths to hide this stuff. I'm going to unplug his computer. Shit. Oh no, I set off an alarm. We need a reason to make the head of Umbrella unstable. Her son is bitten randomly by Billy. Mother shoots him in the face, which, you know, makes sense for the situation. But, you know, all of a sudden Billy decides to bite someone and she's been having these freak outs for like weeks. I'll bring a zombie on the boat. Nothing will go wrong while I test these pheromones. Oh look, it's my child, who's a super genius, by the way, because she's amazing like her mom. She's even more amazing than her mother. But the odd thing is the child can't understand basic instructions. Honey, stay there, the zombie could go crazy. Oh no, she didn't listen. We now have big problems. Character just established dies. Jade is played by Ellen Belinska. She is absolutely gorgeous. But, my God. Like most attractive women, she can't pick a good idea to save her life. She starred in Charlie's Angels, the film that bombed so hard the director blamed men. 
but didn't the director also say the film wasn't for men? There you go. Woman 101 says one thing means another. She starred in this. And she also starred in the soon-to-be-forgotten PlayStation exclusive game Forspoken. And that has been delayed like twice. On top of that, it was the least interesting thing in PlayStation's state of play. That in and of itself is a feat. PlayStation's state of play is a snooze fist. I turn it on to help me get to sleep at night. It's better than Ambien. Like, holy hell, girl. I don't know what you're picking for roles, but fire your agent. And give me a little ring. Well, anyway, other than that, Jade isn't very likable as a kid either. Or an adult. She has a Reva hairstyle, which didn't help the character at all either. Uh, she has a sister, Billy. You tend to be more sympathetic towards Billy, but she turns into a clown-level supervillain by the end of the show. That is why I'm building a better future. Making the world a better place. You hear yourself? I mean, you even sound like her. Who's controlling who? Malloy? It's the same sister dynamic as Arcane, except done poorly. So, so poorly. How many times are we going to do this, actually? Isn't this like the second or third film that's kind of followed the Arcane sister story archetype, but it's done crappily? Whatever, it's Netflix. That's what you get for $15 a month. Billy as a kid is basically like Billie Eilish. You know, down to her style of dress, the name, the fact they even play Billie Eilish music when introducing the characters. It's too on the nose. <laughs> Someone at head office must have thought, oh, this is popular with the kids, am I right? And they figured maybe people who don't play Resident Evil or know anything about it might identify, might like her, might want to watch this garbage. As an adult, Billy is just a very generic supervillain, like I said before, kind of clownish. And she's also so amazing and capable that the T-Virus that killed other people and turned them into zombies just turned her into who she really was. I'm not joking, that's a line from the movie. The fear, the anxiety. It didn't make me somebody else. It let me be who I always was. I was just too scared to admit it. Jade's daughter is also a genius, but she's also stupid as hell when the plot demands it, which makes me think maybe the daughter has autism. <laughs> she's being chased by a zombie and can't go, there's a zombie on the boat. Watch yourself, it's running. Why do the zombies run? World War Z, that's why. The only time zombies ran in Resident Evil was in RE5. They weren't even zombies, really. They were infected with the Uroboros virus, which was different from the T-virus. Jade's husband, Azan, is basically the phrase beta male simp provider. And before you get mad at me, just know that I learned this phrase from a black woman. Seriously, this dude is useless. Do this. I'm the parent here. Me, her mother. And I'm what? Huh? The babysitter? Look, just because I'm not her biological father doesn't mean just, you- Just stop. How are you? I feel like a simp, bro. What's the deal? And he's just there to check a box. Like I said, this whole show, diversity for diversity's sake. He's a stepdad to Jay's daughter. He's a stay-at-home dad. And he has absolutely no balls. At one point, they have to go find Jade's kid, right? And he gets hurt within five seconds of making a decision for himself. And then he just lays on the shore of the beach with an injured leg like a little bitch. You never see him again. I don't know. You have to go find her. Jake, go. Go! Go! Live your life! Granted, the show ended, but you know, still. Oh, did I mention the overuse of contemporary music? Like, Jesus Christ, this feels like a TikTok fever dream. The pop culture references from Elon Musk and Amazon to Billie Eilish music, oftentimes it was intrusive and overused, and the flashbacks made it hard to care about what was going on. Sometimes something major would happen, and then boom, we're back in the Wonder Years with the McDouchebag twins. Kids so annoying, you wouldn't mind seeing the characters die in the show. Oh, I forgot to mention that they're twins. And it, the explanation is elaborate and stupid. I'm not even bothering. 
Who's that? My sister. Twin sister. You're twins. <laughs> I mean, same dad, but our moms with different egg donors, but the surrogate delivered us at the same time, so technically, yeah. At this point, we have diversity for the sake of diversity, even if it veers off into absurdity. After a few episodes, I felt like I was punishing myself. The amount of women are amazing and men are either weak, stupid, or subservient, or all of the above was just staggering. It's thin on plot, and the only good character is Lance Reddick. He is wasted in this film, TV show, or whatever. I mean, Paola has her moments, but when she goes off into the over-the-top boss woman villain, it's at times just funny. She is a sexy older woman, though. I would let her spank me any day of the week. The only thing this show has in common with Resident Evil is in name only. The fact this was made is a clear sign of bad leadership and a lack of respect for the source material. If you want to make your own thing, then do so. But tagging an established IP to get views only leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. This is essentially the Hollywood equivalent of clickbait. The show also has an identity crisis, the likes of which I haven't seen since I was on TikTok today. It doesn't know if it wants to be a teen drama, a standard horror film, or a Resident Evil movie. I don't understand how you can screw up Resident Evil, especially after The Walking Dead existed. You could have just copied Walking Dead and gotten away with it and kept it to like one or two seasons, everyone would have thought you were geniuses. I don't recommend this show. It's pure garbage. It ended on a cliffhanger, and I'm pretty sure the showrunners are hoping to God that this will get greenlit for a second season. This is Cowboy Bebop bad, actually. It's that same level of some ass who thinks they have great ideas and they take something that's genuinely good and they twist it into something else. If you shoehorn in diversity with no story, you have nothing but failure on your hands. How many times can you fail and not understand such a simple fact? It's kind of like, you know, the best way to avoid getting sick is not to smoke the crack. Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb have given this the certified sh** rating. But on the other hand, this show is hated as much as Cowboy Bebop was. Seriously, Netflix, when will you ever learn? With shows like these, it's no wonder Netflix has lost millions of subscribers in the last year. The Japanese like it. And when I say that the Japanese like it, I mean they like to take a dump on it. I will leave you with their comments for this horrible show that they have dubbed politically correct hazard because in Japan, the game is called Biohazard and over here it's renamed Resident Evil. Just in case you didn't know, but I'm pretty sure most people who watch me know that. I'm watching Netflix Biohazard right now, but it is politically correct hazard. As expected, it's such a waste to go with Wesker again when you've gone with a new approach to the story. That last CG anime Resident Evil on Netflix was also pretty iffy. All I have to say is that Netflix Resident Evil is honestly no fun at all. I turned off my brain to watch it and it still had enough. I started watching the Netflix Resident Evil show and I've never felt the this isn't it feeling so hard because of the influence of political correctness. I had to stop watching and I even liked Wesker too. The new Netflix Resident Evil drama is such a waste of time. I dumped it already. I was checking out the Netflix Resident Evil drama but I couldn't get over how egotistical the female protagonist was. Hire me, Netflix. I will take a small, paltry sum of $10 million, and I will steer you in the correct way when it comes to adaptation. You need someone that doesn't live in Hollywood and that isn't on woke coke. I watched the Netflix Resident Evil, but it was just stressful. The producers just don't get it, do they? All we need from Resident Evil is explore, run away, and escape, okay? We don't need any of this human drama bullshit. They could have just made a live action revelations, and it would have definitely been more fun. I heard the Netflix Resident Evil show is terrible. Too bad we can't make Japanese movies, but with American money. Then we can hold back on the American level political correctness. Japan is so sick of this that they... Oh my god. There's like a page of this. It's fine having black people in there, but don't go around changing characters 
that were originally white. That's such a selfish change based on one's own convenience. Go work Netflix, you've upset Japan for like the umpteenth time. Thank God they don't have access to nuclear arms or Hollywood would be gone. Well, don't worry. If you liked Resident Evil from Netflix, a new Death Note is on the way. I guess they figured second time's the charm. Yu Yu Hakusho, God help us all, the Japanese version already looks light years better. We've got Sandman coming. One Piece. There's some more stuff, I, I can't even think of it. I don't care. Well, oh. This is the result of Blackwash Resident Evil. I bet these are like the nicer Japanese comments, <laughs> like Japan's reaction to BLM. It was pretty racist. <laughs> Netflix, I'm going to give you a free before advice, baby. Pay Japanese anime studios to make animations. Not this shit. You don't know what you're doing. Stop it. If you guys brought back Sword of the Stranger to finish the trilogy, people would like that. Not this. You shouldn't have put money into this. You just frittered it away. Uh, I give Cowboy Biba. Oh, wait, wrong movie show. I give Netflix Resident Evil a one snort out of five. I'm not fapping, that's for sure. Edit me fapping in, Stu. We have to give the people what they desire.